So if you're anything like me, and you like disc golf, and you like woodworking, what you want to know is, can I make a wooden disc golf disc? And the answer is, of course, yes you can. But does it fly? I started by looking at a disc off disc. I used a driver in this instance, and then I made some plans um, to kind of give me some rough measurements to go off of um, before I stuck it on the lathe. I then um, just went to the bandsaw after I traced out the disc and cut out some circles to use. I made three of these, so you'll see kind of in here, there's one out of maple, um, one out of walnut, and one out of cherry. And I kind of go back and forth between all of them. So to connect it to the lathe, um, what I thought would be best, um, since I don't have a chuck, uh, would be just to glue this small piece of pine on and then screw the plate onto that so I wouldn't have the holes from the screw actually on the, the disc then. Um, it seemed to work okay. Just getting off the, the piece of wood at the end was uh, a little bit tricky. It took a little time. It really helped to have the um, carbide turning tools um, to cut the, the end grain of the disc when it's going around. Um, most likely my other tools just weren't sharp enough, um, but the carbide worked the best to get just about the smoothest finish um, that I was able to get anywhere. So they worked out good. And then I just took my time. I, I rounded out the uh, the disc so it was round, I was checking for round there. Uh, once I got it round, uh, then I was finally able to um, put some markers on it. Uh, so here's the inner lip. And then I just put two lines on the uh, outside. because there's a little concave um, outer lip. Um, so that line to the right would be cut off, and then uh, that second line there would be actually the, the final outside corner, so to speak. And when I bought my carbide uh, turning tools, I just got the, the square radius. Uh, these are the Rockler ones. They work pretty good uh, because they're on sale. And then I decided ah, I won't get the round one, but I should have got the round one instead of the, uh, like the diamond shaped one because it'd be a little bit more useful. So I had to go to my other tools to, to get that kind of concave um, lip there. But it worked out fine. And then I could just hog out that inside. Just checking my depth. Now I'm starting that final turn on the outside, on the top of the disc. Just started hogging that all out. Some of them turned out a little bit better than others. Some were maybe a little bit thicker. It didn't take enough off. Um, that lip on the outside is actually a little bit thinner than you think. So you just got to keep taking it off. Here I'm just checking the depth 
paired to the original disc. Then I took that end off and then I could just take that down to smooth on the inside since I didn't want to be able to have to sand on the inside of the disc since that's the concave side it would make it a little harder than the convex outside. That's why I glued it on uh, the original pine piece on the outside. Then just sanded it all down. Took off the, uh, the plate. I did use a saw to kind of cut it and then I just uh, broke away the rest and then chiseled it out a little bit. I'm sure there's better ways of doing this. And then I just sanded down that top little edge with the orbital sander. Probably took about five to 10 minutes of sanding to get it all the way down and just try to keep it nice and even. Once I wound it up in the grits, then I finally went over it with some 400 grit sandpaper, and then I oiled it with water locks. I usually do one heavy coat with the, uh, the foam brush. I'll let it sit, let it soak in, then I wipe all the excess off with a rag. And once that dries, then I'll put a second coat of oil on just with the rag, so it's a thin coat. And then once that dries, um, if it's a sufficient enough finish, or if I want to put more on, I can continue to do it like that. Or um, if it's where I want to be, then I'll just use the the wax on top of the oil and put that on with the 4-0 steel wool. And then kind of buff it out with a rag like this. In the case of the walnut, I actually put like four coats of oil on and one or two heavy coats um, because I really wanted to fill in some of that grain. And this you can see me tossing it and it actually flies. And there it hits the wall too. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed.